Hello there, my name is Mooseman, and today I will be informing you of whether you should play Wait or Avoid the Twin Stick Roguelite Forced Showdown. As always, we will be looking at gameplay, aesthetics, future potential, and value before making our final verdict on the release version of Forced Showdown. In our continuing look at Twin Stick Roguelites, Force Showdown comes onto the stage with an additional twist. While the combat is similar to other Twin Stick games, Force Showdown differs by adding a card system to the game. Instead of your upgrades being dependent on things you find during your trials, you design decks that upgrade your specific abilities and must adapt to how you draw your cards during each level. These cards are designed to combo with your three main combat abilities, which vary greatly depending on which of the four characters you choose from. The Combat and Force Showdown is a perfect example of polished, satisfying gameplay that brings out the best in the twin stick genre. Each character plays completely differently than the others, meaning you should be able to find one style you like best, in addition to having the option to play through the game in an entirely different perspective if you learn to play multiple characters. While only having three abilities may make the combat seem like it would be shallow, it actually feels just right when in combination with the complexity of the card system, which adds further depth to the combat by forcing you to always be adapting to the situation. There are three types of cards in the game. Upgrade cards, consumable cards, and spell cards. Upgrade cards allow you to upgrade your stats and give you additional passive abilities that increase your chances to survive in the showdown. These are the primary cards you'll use to build your deck. Consumable cards will give you single-use items. These items range from healing to attack robots to enhancement potions and are your main way of getting out of sticky situations. Spell cards are cards that are varied and generally either give you special attributes similar to upgrade cards or they affect cards already in your hand such as allowing you to draw additional cards or reducing their mana cost. There are also some heals and other status cards that allow you to better prepare before the battle begins. The card system is almost identical to how Hearthstone's card system works, so those who are familiar with the game will understand this system instantly. Each turn you get one mana and draw one card, with each card having a specific mana cost. You can only play cards before you enter each floor, so you must be constantly weighing the risk and reward of using certain cards in certain situations. Do you spend your mana and your cards healing before entering what looks like to be a tough battle? Or do you use your mana to increase your damage to get through the floor faster? These are the types of decisions you'll have to be making to survive each round. Unlike Hearthstone, however, all the cards in the game are only available for free through unlocking them over time with gold earned in-game. Each 100 gold, you will have the chance to earn another card, and you can even get multiple cards in a single spin. You can only have two of each card in your deck, and any extras are turned into shards which can be combined to form guaranteed new cards later on. The problem with the card system is that you're pretty much stuck to using the default decks until you spend quite a bit of time unlocking the other cards. Since you get some class cards by default with the Squire of Light character, you have at least one character you can reliably build a deck for, but for all the other characters you are relying on luck to get enough class cards to build a deck. Class cards are vitally important because they are very powerful upgrade cards related to each character's specific skills, so trying to build a deck without them is pretty much impossible. The time it takes to get new cards isn't unreasonable, but don't expect to have access to all the cards until you are a few dozen hours into the game already. Campaigns represent the main meat of the game. To complete a campaign, you have to choose which worlds to fight in, with each world having six floors and a boss. Each floor of a world must be cleared continuously, with your health and stats carrying over until you beat the boss at the end. Each world also has different effects. Some of them are positive, like giving you more mana, and some of them are negative, like having continuous fireballs flying at you on each floor. It's these effects that make up the depth and challenge of the game, and while the goal of beating all seven floors stays the same each time, your strategy will vary greatly depending on those effects. If you die even once, your entire campaign is over, and you must restart from the beginning. While I enjoy the campaign format, the main game consists of only three campaigns. The problem is that while the second campaign is immediately playable after beating the first campaign, the third campaign is locked behind a number of quests that are very repetitive. In order to unlock the final campaign, you need to play hundreds of cards of each type. This way of unlocking the last major part of the game is not fun, and brings out one of the major issues in Force Showdown, the lack of length in the main modes. The quests that unlock the final campaign are obviously designed to stall the player from rushing through the game quickly to give the illusion that the game is longer than it really is. If you didn't have to ground out the last set of quests, you could potentially beat all the main game has to offer in less than 5 or 6 hours if you are particularly skilled. It doesn't mean you won't want to play through each campaign a few times, 
but each campaign still doesn't have enough content to really keep your interest past maybe four or five playthroughs. This also stems from the card based nature of the game. Since most of your stats are dependent on your cards and not by your performance, Force Showdown doesn't have the same amount of replayability as other roguelites. In other roguelites and roguelikes, you are at the mercy of the game to give you good upgrades along the way, making each playthrough, even with the same setup, extremely unique. However, in Force Showdown, once you've beaten the campaign, Outside of trying new decks, there really isn't any good incentive to repeat them because you'll basically be doing the same thing with only slight variation. This is remedied a bit by the daily modes. There are three modes available, daily, equality daily, and one try daily. These modes are designed to test your skills to adapt and require you to use specific rules for the entirety of the run. Daily is like a normal campaign world, but with there being three worlds that all have the same effects instead of just one. The daily worlds are also increasingly difficult, so placing high in the rankings for them takes a greater amount of skill than simply being the campaign levels did. Equality Daily is a mode that requires players to use the same character, companion and deck as every other player. The deck also draws the cards in the exact same order every time, allowing you to plan out specifically how best to proceed once you've seen what cards you'll get and when. One try daily is exactly what it sounds like, where you only get a single try without being able to see what you are actually up against. The more points you score, the higher on the leaderboards you will be placed, so if you're interested in playing the game somewhat competitively, these modes will provide a ton of replayability. That being said, they still don't provide the same level of structure as the campaigns, so those who are interested in progression will still end up losing interest over time. The aesthetics in Force Showdown is where the game is strongest. The entire game is based around the idea that you're in a life or death game show with each campaign representing a different episode. Each enemy, boss, companion, and character is extremely well designed from an artistic standpoint. All of them also have great animations, which, in addition to looking nice, is also vital to giving players plenty of information on when an enemy is going to attack. I would also like to note that I would be willing to pay immediately for a plush doll of the puff from the game because they are beyond adorable. In addition to great looking stylized graphics, the game also adds a lot of little things that help with the immersion. Cameras follow you around and flash pictures after your victory, and the announcer acts like a game show host talking to the audience. One other little thing that I found really cool were the ads in the background that would totally be present in this kind of game show. While most of them are for fictional products, I saw a few XSplit and Steel Series logos which were the two sponsors for the pre-release tournament I was a part of. It's very rare that I praise in-game advertising, but when it's done realistically and in the spirit of the game, it gives the game a unique level of immersion that I feel Force Showdown managed to achieve. The voice acting, especially by the announcer, is extremely well done as well. Each boss talks to you during the game and have unique personalities that make them feel like more than just a bigger target. That being said, I wish there were a few more bosses, because a lot of the time you are fighting the same few bosses over and over, and this dialogue loses some of its magic. One minor criticism I do have of the game's aesthetics is that some of the enemies have questionable damage ranges in comparison to what the animation actually shows. A few times I felt like I was out of range and of ability, only to be killed by it even though it didn't look like it was physically connected. One of the best things about this style of roguelite is there is pretty much unlimited possibility for additional features being added in the future. Additional campaigns being added to the game will greatly increase the replayability, and additional cards will improve the variety of builds possible with the game. As it stands now, there's only four characters available, and while each is vastly different, I didn't find this to be enough. Now, the card system does allow for a decent level of customization for each character, but none of the cards actually add any new abilities. They only upgrade existing ones. Besides adding entirely new characters, I feel like the developers could greatly increase the depth of the game by adding cards that directly change your skills, allowing for each character to have different abilities instead of just upgrades for the same abilities. These cards could be keystone cards or simply passive cards that grant you new abilities all the time in exchange for some kind of other downgrade. Force Showdown is priced at $20, and I believe that to be a fair price. While I still think the game has replayability issues, you will have no problem spending 15 hours at least in-game beating everything available to you if you play all the campaigns and participate in the daily modes. While Force Showdown's card system won't be redefining the genre, the game still represents one of the most polished twin-stick shooters in recent times. The solid gameplay and well-developed aesthetic gives the feeling of quality. The game is good, very good, but it's also a game that I believe will benefit from additional content in the future to help improve its replayability. 
That being said, my final verdict for Force Showdown is to wait. But do know if you do decide to play the game now, you will not be upset with your decision. The game just needs a little more time to grow into something truly great before I can confidently say that the game is a definite must have. Thank you for watching this play, wait or avoid review of Force Showdown. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more reviews, news, and other gaming commentary. If you would like to see another review of a twin stick roguelite, you're in luck because the last review I just did was for the game Flame Break, a hybrid of Binding of Isaac's combat and FTL's choice system. If you're looking for something a little bit different, you could always check out my review of Factorio, a top-down factory management game where your goal is to survive on an alien planet.